us is for this Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is only a portion of the Mahabharata. This was also written by Vyasa. Then at last he was not satisfied. Uh, even after writing so many big literatures, he was not satisfied. So one day he was sitting very morose, and uh, at the same time his spiritual master Narad came to see him. Because Narad is not an ordinary spiritual master, he could understand that my disciple is sitting morose. So I must give, I must go there and give him some uh, encouragement because he is a great uh, personality. He is uh, giving human society so many nice things, but he is not very happy in his mood. So I shall go and give him some encouragement. So I am reading from the Bhagavad uh, this, uh, I mean, the introduction, how Bhagavad was compiled by Vyasde. Uh, I am reading that chapter. This is in the first canto, fifth chapter. So when the spiritual master Nara came, it is the custom of disciple to receive him and to give him nice seat and uh, offer obeisances and then uh, um, talk on different subject matter. So in Nara came, Vyasdeva offered him good seat and comfortable seat and offered his obeisances. Then uh, Nara is speaking. He saw his disciple Vyasdeva very much morose. So he is asking, Parasarja Mahabhava Bhavata Kuchita Atmana Puritusyati Sharira Atma Manasa Eva Bha. My dear Vyasdev, I see that you are not very happy. <coughs> but I am asking you a question, whether a person becomes ever happy who has accepted this body as self or the mind as self. There are two classes of men in the material world. I mean the intelligent class. I am not speaking of the ordinary class of men. Those who are interested in knowledge, in higher thoughts, in philosophy, in religion, ethics, morality, so many things there are in science, in literature. So best day is everything in one person. And he has written so many books as I described. Now Narada is asking him, my dear, Parasarja. Parasarja means Vasudeva was the son of Parasar. His father's name was Paras. Therefore, he is addressing him, Parasarja Mahabhava. Mahabhava. You are very fortunate. You have got the opportunity of doing the best service to the humanity by presenting such important literatures. Therefore, you are Mahabhava. The human society is not ordinary task. And not, it is not possible for any ordinary man. Uh, all great men, all great, uh, I mean, say, personality who had appeared on this earth and rendered great service to the humanity, they are still remembered. <coughs> Just like in your country, President George Washington, we render very valuable service to your country, he still remember. Uh, recently, President Kennedy, he still remember. Similarly, those persons who have dedicated their life for the welfare of the human society, they are not ordinary. Therefore, he is addressed 
as Mahabhav, the most fortunate personality, uh, because he dedicated his life for the good of the humanity. The greater a man is engaged for his service to the humanity, he is considered the great man. Similarly, uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya, he also renounced this world. You see, his future is just eighteen years to twenty years born. And after this movement, Sankirtan movement at Navadvip, uh, during his householder life, uh, he was married at the age of seventeen years. So he was considered to be a householder. <coughs> and his first wife died at the age of twenty years. Then his mother requested to marry again. So he married again at the age of twenty years. And but he took sannyas at the age of twenty-four years. He renounced the order of I mean the household life in twenty-four when he was only twenty-four years old. His wife was only sixteen years old. And his mother was about seventy years old. But still he took sannyas. Why? For the good of the human. He was very well to do. He was Brahmi. He was learned. And he had many followers. And he still, when he saw that if I remain a householder and they will not care for my instruction, therefore he, he was obliged to accept the sannyas order. Because in India the system is a sannyasi, a renounced order, a gentleman in renounced order, he is accepted as spiritual instructor. So this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also dedicated his life for the whole humanity. In his preaching there is clear statement why he was preaching this moment all over India. He instructed every Indian. The exact verse in Bengali language is that, Bharat Pumite Janma Manusha Janma Hila Jaya Janma Shartha Kari Karo Paropaka. He has ordered that anyone who has taken his birth in India as a human, human form of life, he must take up this responsibility of preaching this Sankirtan movement all over the world to do the best service to the humanity. That is his order. To do the best service to the humanity. You are so much compassionate with the human society. So by his grace, his philosophy, his teaching are now being spread in the Western countries. Uh, and I have taken up the humble responsibility. Please help me. You will be happy. It is such a nice movement. Uh, so uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was also humanity. He is not a religious. He was not meant for preaching a particular cult to gather some followers. No. It is the need of the human society. And he wanted to preach all over the world. Uh, because it was not possible at that time. In his, and he lived only for forty-eight years. He took sannyas at the age of twenty-four years. And he passed away in twenty, twenty-four years. He was very busy all over India. Uh, therefore, he left his legacy to the Indian, any Indian, to take up this cause and preach this uh, cult of Sankirtan movement all over the world. So uh, I shall request you to understand the philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his movement. Uh, we have got already six centers, uh, five centers in your country. 
Uh, I started first in 1966, July, in New York. Then I started in San Francisco, then uh, at Boston, then at Montreal. Of course, I did not go everywhere. These boys, the sincere boys and girls were helping me uh, have joined this movement. They are doing. This center was started also by one boy. I have come for the first time here. Now I request you that this movement is not nothing sectarian or anything blah. It is the movement as a necessity of the human society. You judge it, you consider it, you put your logic arguments in every way, you'll find that this is the necessity of the present day. So not only one center in Los Angeles, but you open center in every village, every country, every home. And the, the, the process is very simple. You chant Hare Krishna and dance in ecstasy, and everything will come within yourself gradually. Everything will come. You will practically feel how you are becoming reformed. Uh, there is no need of uh, wasting time. This Hare Krishna movement can be done at home, outside home, <laughs> when you are working, when you are walking, every moment. So try to understand this movement and try to follow it. Uh, it is not sectarian, it is the need. Uh, I shall discuss all this part gradually. Uh, if you kindly come and attend our classes, I shall very much thank you. Thank you very much. If there is any question, you can ask. What do you think about when you're chanting? Chanting? You simply hear what is when you say Hare Krishna, you try to hear the very sound, Hare Krishna, that's all. Nothing more. This is meditation. Your tongue and your ear should be engaged in sounding this transcendental vibration, Hare Krishna best meditation. This is also accepted in Bhagavad-gītā, the uh, best meditation. You don't keep your mind elsewhere. You, ma you keep your mind on the chanting, Hare Krishna and here. So this is uh, responsive. When I was chanting, you are hearing. When you were chanting, you were chanting I was hearing. So it is exchange. I hear chant, your chanting, you hear my chanting. This is the process. So there is no possibility of thinking anything else. Best and the easiest type of meditation. And good. Factual. You at once become on the transcendental plane. Therefore you feel dancing. So practice it and you'll see how spiritually you are making it all. And it's very simple. When you are walking on the street, you can chant Hare Krishna. There is no tax, there is no expenditure, there is no loss. 
that the game is very great, why don't you try? If without any loss, without any expenditure, you gain something, the super most sublime thing, spiritual realization, why don't you try for it? We are not asking any money. We are not asking two hundred and fifty dollars for paying for hearing. No. It is freely distributed. Please take it and try it. Make an experiment. There is no business here. You simply chant Hare Krishna and try to hear the sound. That's all. Nothing. Any other question? The sky is blue. Can you explain? Because the sky is blue. Yes, why the sky is blue? First of all, try to explain. This, this is you are seeing every day. Can you explain? <laughs> Don't, Rama? The sky is blue. That's all. Therefore, it is blue. Krishna is blue. That would be. Sky is the reflection of Krishna's bodily effulgence. Therefore it is blue. Just like if the cover of the light is blue or, I mean to say, um, red, the uh, radiance also becomes similarly. Krishna is blue. It is described in the Vedic literature. Venum kannantam aravinda dalayata aksham varahavatam sammasitam vida sundaram. God's bodily hue is just like bluish cloud, but is very beautiful. These are not imagination, they are taken from Vedic literature. So his bodily uh, luster is like that. Therefore he blue. It is not that we have painted blue by imagination. No. It is authority. Venum Kanvantam. He is always engaged. He is God. Therefore he is a, always enjoying playing flute. Oh, he hasn't got to do anything. And it is uh, stated in the Vedic literature. Parasya sati vividhai vasriyati. Natasya tarjam karamanja vidyas. God has nothing to do. What? Uh, and then what kind of body? He has to work. This is Vedic literature. Parasya sati. He has got immense energies there doing everything. Just like a big man, a rich man. He is sitting silently in his room. But his assistant, his secretary, his manager, they are doing something. He will find Krishna always in enjoyment. Uh, Ananda Maya Vyasa, these are Vedanta Sutra. He is jolly by his nature. And if we associate with him, then he becomes jolly. We are also part and parcel of Krishna. Now we are materially encumbered, therefore we have to transfer again from this material encumbrances to spiritual life. That is Krishna called.
So Krishna is blue because he is described in the Vedic literature as such. Why you are here now? Yeah. Why you are here now in this store? I was born. No, I mean it's in this room. To learn. Uh, learn. So that is your choice. You have come to learn here. So you have got little independence because you are part and parcel of Supreme. The Supreme has got complete independence. Therefore the independence quality is there also in you, just like gold. A particle of gold is also gold. Similarly, because you are particle of Krishna, so you have got all the qualities in minute quantity also. You have got all the qualities of Krishna. And Krishna is, God is fully independent. Therefore you want to be independent. Your intuition is to always to remain independent. But you have been conditioned. Oh. You have been conditioned. When you regain your spiritual life, you also become as independent as Krishna. So that independence, when we want to imitate Krishna by misusing our independence, then we are given the chance of so-called material enjoyment in this material. <coughs> 